This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. All right, well, good evening, everybody. This will be a little medical minute on uh, diverticulitis, not always the most exciting subject, but um, talk about some changes potentially in its management. So, you know, classically, we see people with diverticulitis, we diagnose it on CT scan, and we send them home with antibiotics as long as there's no complications like a bowel obstruction or any abscess, but the treatment's almost always antibiotics. And there's been some question kind of over the last couple of years of whether these patients actually need antibiotics, whether it's a real infection or it's just inflammation. Um, and there's been a couple of studies that have looked at this. They've had some cool names, like one of them was a Diablo study. And there was another cool one recently called the Dynamo study. And the interesting thing, or the good thing about this recent study is that it actually took regular emergency department patients and discharged them from the emergency department and either gave them antibiotics or no antibiotics and checked to see if people with antibiotics did any better or if they did worse, if they didn't get the antibiotics. The things they looked at were kind of readmission and there was no difference whether you got antibiotics or not, whether you needed to be admitted to the hospital. There was no difference on whether you had to come back to the emergency department, and there was no difference in pain control or whether you got surgery. So overall, in a group of patients who you know, were very mild diverticulitis, didn't have you know, a lot of other medical problems, in this study, they seemed to do very well with no antibiotics. Kind of the issue that's potentially keeping this from being taken to you know, the bedside at this point is we still don't know exactly which patients it applies to, you know, which ones still need antibiotics. Another thing is that the professional societies are starting to endorse this. There's like a World Surgical Society. The American College of Colorectal Surgeons has approved this or recommended it, but things like GI societies and uh, emergency medicine societies haven't quite gotten on board yet. But I think in the next couple of years, hopefully a couple more studies, we'll figure out which patients it's safe in. And, you know, maybe one less group of patients that needs antibiotics would be a good thing. Thanks. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening. Hey EMM, it's Mason here to tell you about an exciting new opportunity we are offering. In an effort to tangibly improve our organization's commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, we created the Diversity and Inclusion Award that fourth-year medical students that identify as underrepresented in medicine and are applying to emergency medicine residencies are eligible to apply for starting today. We understand that the cost of applying to residency adds up, and we want to do what we can to ease that financial burden. We are extending three $200 awards to selected individuals following a blinded review of all applications. Applications will be accepted through the end of November, and winners will be announced mid-December. Check out our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash EDI dash award for all the details and to access the free application, or click the link in our show notes. Thank you.